Do you have a best friend at work? And if you're a school leader, do you see connections between staff as a positive and productive factor in the workings of your school? Relationships are one of the biggest predictors of well-being. Research has shown that there's a high correlation between engagement at work and sense of connection through having friends at work. Teachers who have friends at work are more likely to collaborate with others, reducing workload and increasing their effectiveness. A recent Gallup poll included an item about friendship in their employee engagement survey because they knew that it linked to improved business outcomes. When teachers have a deep sense of affiliation with other staff members, they're more likely to take positive actions that benefit the school, actions they may not have otherwise even considered if they didn't have strong relationships with their co-workers. I'm going to share with you some of the reasons why a best friend at work is good for your well-being and some ways to help create a school culture where friendships can naturally develop and thrive. My name's Mari Amaro and I'm the principal presenter at The Highly Effective Teacher. I'm a teacher and I've been working with students and supporting teachers for over 30 years. I'm passionate about teacher wellbeing and about working with teachers so that they thrive in the teaching profession. Improved teacher wellbeing means improved student wellbeing and that contributes to better academic and social outcomes for our students. If you'd like to learn more about teacher wellbeing, please subscribe to our channel and make sure you ring the bell so that you receive notifications of all our videos. Connection is important. People want more from their job than simply a paycheck. The paycheck is important, but a sense of trust, belongingness and inclusion will keep people at a job more than a pay rise will. And people are driven by connection as long as some other factors are present. For example, if teachers don't know what's expected of them or don't have the opportunity to do what they do best every day, the friendships they do have are more likely to turn into an gripe sessions at work. But when these factors that are in place and staff do have a best friend or best friends at work, they're less likely to be actively looking or watching for other job opportunities. They're more connected with other co-workers and trusting their integrity and ethics. They're more likely to take risks that could lead to innovation. They're more likely to have a positive experience during the day, such as enjoying what they do, making more progress, and being recognised for successes. And they're less likely to report having a negative experience during the day, such as worry, stress, or feeling tired. So how do you promote connection at work? Number one, have open communication. Have you heard the saying, the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it has occurred? And this illusion can create lots of problems. And one of the biggest causes of stress and burnout in the workplace is poor communication. So it makes sense that open communication assists in developing a more inclusive and trusting work environment. When staff know what's going on and feel included in decision-making, they are much happier at work and thus more engaged and productive. In schools, clear and open communication can be one of the biggest challenges facing the leadership. And the complaints from leadership can often be that staff don't read their emails or they don't read the notice board. But the issue is that people need to be communicated with in a variety of ways so that the messages are received. There's no point in simply complaining about staff lack of engagement in the communication process. Any system you put in place requires clear processes and built-in accountability. One school I worked at many years ago had a system of communication that included a whiteboard that was at the sign-in book where daily staff absences were recorded. This meant that we knew who was absent on any day. And because sign-in was compulsory, it was a simple way to communicate the information. And this was information that may affect lots of people. We also held a half-hour staff meeting once a week before school to communicate with each other about operational issues and any changes to the weekly schedule. I've found that relying on email as the only method of communication can mean that due to the huge numbers of emails in schools, some staff miss the important emails, especially when email is used to communicate everything from ILPs to the school athletics carnival details, as well as alerts for vulnerable students. Additionally, effective leaders also know that they need to acknowledge the feelings of their staff when they're communicating information that may be difficult for some to hear. For example, validating staff feelings by saying something like, I know that some of you may not have wanted to use this particular reading program 
and have some good reasons why. But after con careful consideration of what's on offer, I've decided to go with this particular program. Giving reasons why you made a particular decision adds to the communication. For example, I went with this one because of cost or the amount of evidence-based research or because it's more flexible and allows for teacher input or I really felt the urgent need to start with something and we'll review the progress as we go. If you're interested in learning more about the signs of teacher burnout and how to manage those, then check out the video link here and learn what you can do to reduce symptoms of burnout and improve your well-being. Number two, opportunities for collaboration. Providing opportunities and encouraging staff to work together to reduce workload, to improve teacher performance through peer learning, to increase innovation, and to develop professional relationships increases the likelihood of positive connections between teachers. An effective way to do this is through peer teacher coaching, providing opportunities for teachers to share practice by observing each other and giving feedback can help to build a supportive school culture that values collaboration and recognizes individual strength. Building professional relationships builds closer connections between staff. Celebrate ideas, successes, risk taking and collaborations by sharing these across the whole staff and emphasize the positive relational benefits of working together and the increased job satisfaction. Encourage participation and engagement in collaborative endeavors by recognizing and promoting teams and working together to achieve strategic school goals. Number three, Seek opportunities to work across sectors. Providing and seeking opportunities for teachers to work across teams and across sectors so that they're exposed to a variety of ideas and ways of working can really help develop positive relationships between staff. Allow for cross-fertilisation of ideas and for staff to be extended, challenged and engaged with different colleagues. Encourage staff to engage in philanthropic activities together, like fundraising, and promote healthy staff culture by modeling positivity and supportive professional relationships. Number four, engage with social activities. The culture of a school begins with the leadership and encouraging staff participation in social activities is important for teacher well-being. Leaders set the tone for the school culture, so it's important for staff to see their principal and the leadership team taking time out of their day to eat lunch, chat informally, and perhaps going for drinks on Fridays. In schools where I've worked where there's a poor staff and work culture, leadership have remained aloof or worse still, bully and micromanage staff. And they set a poor example by being at work till late into the evening and monitoring the arrivals of staff with judgmental comments and negative talk. It's important that leadership and the principal set the tone of the school and think about what they need to do for teacher well-being and building connections between staff. Thanks for watching this video. Stay, stay safe and happy teaching.